Hello and welcome to this very quick video to look at wiring LEDs and powering them and having them in places on radio control vehicles. Now I've done a video that I will link to down below. Don't watch this one, the first one, because I'm going to be answering a couple of questions from people that asked on that original video. That shows how to calculate the value of a resistor, how it all works, so that you can add LEDs in places safely in whatever vehicle that you have. This time it's getting into a little bit more detail for a couple of the people who asked questions on that original video. It's taken me a week or two because of the summer holidays to get to it, but it's going to explain how you can wire multiple LEDs in series, but also how to wire multiple LEDs in different places as well. So I'm going to get into the slides and let me explain in a little bit more detail how this works, but answering two people's specific questions about it all too. So let's look at Antworm 09's question first. And as a quick reminder, Antworm was asking, I'm still a little confused on which resistor I would need if I was going to wire up two 12 volt single LEDs to a 9 volt battery. Would I need multiple resistors? If so, how many ohms would there be? Any help would be great. Thank you. Well, first and foremost, if you have two 12 volt LEDs, they're not going to be powered from a 9 volt battery. Or if they are, they're going to be quite dim because the internal resistor that's usually part of those devices will be designed to get them to their nice level of brightness on a 12 volt supply. But let me give you an example here. If you're running that 9 volt battery at Worm 09, what you would do with a couple of LEDs. And again, I'd use discrete separate LEDs as we've covered in that first video. Again, link down below. So the circuit's going to look like this. We have a 9 volt battery. We have a positive wire going through a resistor and we'll calculate the value of that resistor in a moment. And then the current is going to flow through each of these LEDs in turn before going back to the battery. Now, the current, as we know, needs to be about 20 milliamps, typically. Again, check the specifications for your own LED. But because they're in series or wired one after the other on the circuit, that 20 milliamps is actually going to flow through each of them. So we only need one lot of 20 milliamps because the 9 volts is going to push that current through each of the LEDs. Now, don't forget that each of these LEDs needs about 1.8 volts again that can be a little bit higher can be a little bit less some leds will need about 2 2.1 volts but typically a naked led needs about 2 volts but we'll take it as 1.8 which is kind of normal for 5 millimeter packet of leds so that means that these guys together are going to need about 3.6 volts we also know that we're going to have a single lot of 20 milliamps flowing through this circuit, which means that if we take away the 9 volts and we take away the two 1.8 and I take away another 1.8, we know the resistor itself, that needs to drop 5.4 volts. Because 5.4 plus 1.8 plus 1.8 is 9 volts. So in this situation, we now know the voltage that the resistor needs to drop. And we also know the current that we want to flow through the resistor. This is great news because now it means we can use Ohm's law and we can work out the resistance, which is voltage divided by current. So the resistance is 5.4 volts, which is the voltage that this resistor needs to drop. And we know it's 0 0.02 amps or 20 milliamps. And that gives us a value of 270 ohms. So if we were going to build this circuit and have these uh, nice bright LEDs, I would put a resistance of about 270 ohms in this position. And that means then that's going to limit the current and also drop the voltage that we need. So the LEDs work for a nice long time too. So that's the answer for Antworm 09. Uh, wouldn't use 12 volt LEDs. You can just wire them um, both to the positive and negative terminals of the battery. You'll probably find they're quite dull. However, if you do it this way, you can get the LEDs a nice level of brightness and you're just using one lot of 20 milliamps to power both. Next question then was from Ormigo111, and he's saying, nice video of always. Thank you very much for the compliment. He actually needs a more complex wiring diagram, how you connect multiple LEDs. So he wants maybe 18 LEDs on a 12 volt battery. Doesn't understand how you can do that one resistor or not. So for 
Omega 111. Let's have a look at this particular example. So here we have a similar circuit to what we had before. However, this time we're running a 12 volt battery in this example, and we've got the same kind of circuit. We have one lot of current that's gonna flow and be limited by this resistor, and that's going to light up one, two, three, four, five, six LEDs, and it's gonna flow back into the battery. Why six LEDs? Well, that's because each of these is going to again drop about 1.8 volts, so together, these guys are going to drop or need about 10.8 volts, so six lots of 1.8 for the six LEDs. And if we add any more, then we're getting pretty close to what the battery voltage is. So because we can only get six, and in this instance, this person wants 18, but that's okay, we'll get to that in a minute, we can do exactly the same thing as we did over here. What we can do is again, we can figure out that it's 20 milliamps going to be flowing through the circuit. We also know that it's a 12 volt battery, but these LEDs are gonna drop 10.8 volts. So if we take 10.8 volts away from the 12 volt battery, we're going to get 1.2 volts. So we now know that the resistor needs to drop 1.2 volts. It also needs to limit the current to about 20 milliamps. So again, we know the voltage. Again, we know the current. Using good old Ohm's law, we can figure that out. So resistance or R equals the voltage divided by the current. The voltage this time is only 1.2 volts. So it's only Diddy. And the 0.02 amps or 20 milliamps, that gives us a very low resistance, only 60 ohms. So that is the resistor that we would need up here. Now, the reason that we can only get six LEDs like this is because each of them need basically 1.8 volts, so that's 10.8. If we added another LED, which would be seven, then we'd be in trouble because we don't actually have that much left. There's only 1.2 volts isn't being used or being dissipated by the resistor in this instance. That isn't enough because we need 1.8 for another LED. So how would we add other LEDs into this? Because ideally, Omega 111 actually wants 18. Well, this string of LEDs and resistor, we can have as many of those as we want. So we can add another one. And this time again, it's another 20 milliamps flowing through these particular LEDs. So I would have another 60 on here, but we could do it like this and have individual 60. And then the next one would be, guess what? You can do that again. Now you could actually have a single resistor down here, but I like doing it this way for a couple of reasons. One, if there's an issue that then if you get something wrong it's only going to destroy one resistor potentially but also it may be that you don't want equal numbers it may be that you want i don't know this is one uh, wing of a plane this is another wing of a plane but maybe you only want three or four leds out on the tail in that case then you wouldn't have 60 ohms you would have something a little bit bigger probably 120 ish something like that because that is going to need a lot less LEDs. Again, sometimes you might find that if you're using different color LEDs, they might need different voltages. So the reason that these asterisks are all around the voltages is because it's specific to the LEDs that you're interested in. Again, check out that first video if you don't understand anything that I'm banging on about. So hopefully that answers it for the two of you. That is how I would do it. To put two together in series, I would add a resistor. The resistor it needs to be 270 ohms. If you want multiples, personally, I would be tempted to do it this way. It also potentially means that you could add a single resistor down here and you could calculate it for all three. However, I like to do it this way. It just keeps everything neat. And then subsequently, if you want to add more LEDs, another layer on, then it's easy to do that too. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.